Jennifer's journey to single parenthood prepared her to help couples and single people who are struggling or going through IVF with their journey to motherhood. She uses her 30 years of reflexology experience and what she has learned about her body while she was going through her fertility journey. Jennifer helps people with both health and wealth as they, she feels, go hand in hand. Jennifer Connolly. Yes, I'm Jennifer Connolly and leading on from what you've just heard, single parents are the ultimate of the family. You are mum, you are dad, you are carer, you are cleaner, you are everything to your children. And you support them on all levels. My single parent journey is not normal um, for a lot of people, even now. Um, you guys didn't really choose to be single parents. You ended up having to choose to be single parents. I actually chose to be a single parent. I was 39 and with a, sort of with a guy and fell pregnant. And I miscarried at three months and it was a missed miscarriage. I went into hospital to have that unborn child taken away. That was on a Saturday night. On the Sunday morning, I decided, after listening to other people around the hospital, and I'd sort of done some talking to myself, that I wanted to be a mum. And I went home and went onto the internet and found the next fertility clinic that I could go to. I lied because you're meant to be out of having um, any fertility treatments or anything, or having had uh, a miscarriage for like six months. So I said, oh yes, it was six months ago. In fact, it was actually a week ago. So I went down the IVF route and I was very fortunate that my mum had recently passed away and I had a small inheritance that allowed me to go through six IVF treatments. Um, I did this with the support of um, some other reflexologists. As a reflexologist um, of many years at that point, I was also teaching. So I was very lucky that my students were wanting to work on me to learn. I said, yes, go ahead, there's my feet. Um, <laughs> so unfortunately, that did not work. So at the end of that, I then thought, where else can I go? I still want to be a mum. I then went down the IVF route, uh, sorry, the adoption route. And I was very, again, very fortunate as a single person, the, year, the, the law changed three years before um, to allow single parent and same sex couples to adopt children. And at that point, I was already 41. So I've obviously gone through the IVF over a couple of years. And the law then states as well that yes, I could have a baby. Obviously being a single parent, that wasn't really going to happen. Most babies in this day and age will tend to go to a two-parent family because that's what they deem is a family. Um, I was then, I went through all the process. I was the actually only single person on our group that you go through some adoption training and there were eight couples and me. And it was really interesting to see the dynamics of everybody Everyone was so supportive as well, which was really nice as a single person. I was very luckily, um, well, I went to a coffee morning, let's just say, um, at a community centre run by social services to, and they then presented the, what do they call them? Difficult to place children. And my son, as it turns out, was actually um, presented at that on, on that coffee morning. He was three years old, had come from a very neglected family, or wasn't even a family, again, a single parent that really could not cope with child number five. Um, and he want, they were looking for a two-parent family. The social worker that presented him sat next to me. So I said to her, what's wrong with a one-parent family? And she went, oh, if you're interested, come and see me, put your name down. And that, literally, that's what it's like. It's like a catalogue. You put your name down just to make sure that you're in the running to be picked. It's, it's an, one way of doing it, but it's not nice. Long shot is they found a two-parent family within that group, within that coffee morning. Great. But I didn't know this until a year later. Um, but they, they got all the way to um, 
No, so I'll start again. They did find a two-parent family with that group. Um, they wouldn't get rid of their dog because you have to be prepared to change some of your life to allow a child to come in because they may not like dogs or they might be allergic to cats or whatever. So they went by the by. And then a while later, they found another two-parent family and they got all the way to what they call matching panel. You stand in front of a group of your peers um, and doctors and social workers and they ask you questions. And it turned out they didn't get approved at that point because they didn't like the colour of his hair. I hope they were banned, to be fair. Um, and thankfully, I'd actually spoken to that social worker when I did because she remembered me. And I actually went to um, Canada to see a friend of mine, but the week before, I was matched with what is now my son. He was four when I adopted him, or four and a half. And we have had a challenging journey, I will say. Um, and as a reflexologist, I was able to be around to support him. As an adopted child, he came with lots of stuff. And at 13, 14, he was kicked out of several schools because he was trying to find his own identity. And thankfully, I was at home working as a reflexologist myself, for myself, within my own environment. I could work around his needs and help him through. He did eventually go back to his um, very first school and actually managed to get through school, which was a troubling time for him. But what also helped with me, because I was obviously financially responsible for him, me, my house, and that was hard. So I actually, I think it was before he came to me, I was already working with a company called um, Tropic, which is a natural skincare range. And I found that was really useful to actually throw into the, the mix of working around his needs. It also ended up helping him because it's a completely natural skincare range. When I then went on to um, specialise with fertility reflexology, it helps because it doesn't upset the hormones. So what you're putting on your skin goes into your um, bloodstream within 30 seconds. So natural skincare was the way forward. So I was telling all my clients and I was getting some good successes, one with reflexology and obviously with some of the tropic. <coughs> Financially, lockdown. We all, obviously, I worked on people's feet. I wasn't allowed to do that. And literally two weeks before lockdown, a friend had introduced me to um, a company that actually helps people save money on their utility bills, which was, for me, an absolute godsend. We were able to do it remotely, and it allowed me to, one, satisfy my analytical brain because I used to work for a bank um, but it also allowed me to earn some money so that's where I am today so I am able to support myself I'm able to support my son and I've actually managed how I do not know to pay my mortgage off two years early <laughs> so one of the things and again my my story is quite short in that if say it's um Yeah, I w I'm, I'm supporting him even now. Mum, can I have 20 quid? Can I have 30 quid? He's got a motorbike now, he's 20. Um, his birthday's three days before mine, and actually next year we've got, both got big birthdays. He's 21, and I'm, I'm, I will be 60, so we're planning on a big, huge celebration. Um, but even now, it's, Mum, can I have some money for petrol? <laughs> but that is my journey. And my, my, my tip to everyone basically is, like the previous ladies you are stronger than you think you are and the amount of people that have said to me how have you done this on your own why have you done it on your own because I wanted to and I needed to and I feel very privileged and very proud of myself of being able to do that <laughs> thank you